Oh, what is going on, guys? Today, we got a pretty fun and interesting video. Bleacher Report, a couple days ago, released this interesting article that gave like 20 fan-suggested rule changes to the NHL. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to go through them and kind of react, give my personal thoughts. You guys can let me know in the comments. What do you think? So let's dive into it. This obviously comes to us from Bleacher Report. There's a guy that's been making some content for Bleacher Report. Thought I'd help the brand out and react to this. So let's get into it. Up first, special teams. Some rule changes regarding special teams. I have a couple. If a team scores on a delayed penalty, they still get the power play. Two, when a period ends during a power play, the opening faceoff of the next period should be on the dot closest to where the puck was at the end of the period. I assume that he says it's dumb that a team can be in the offensive zone and then have to bring it out. So, first off, scored on the delayed penalty. I, I don't love that because you, are, you usually go a six on five. You basically do have a less effective power play when you score on that. I get maybe if you get tripped up and then you score like right after that and you don't get that six skater out, maybe there should be something where if you get the six skater out, it shouldn't, it sh it, the penalty should be dead because you're obviously taking advantage of that. You pull the goalie. You're not in danger of getting an empty net scored on you because as soon as the opposing team touched the puck, the play is dead. So I could be down if it's like five seconds after the penalty is called and you score, then maybe you get the power play. But if it is six on five, that seems a little bit unfair. That second part, I wholeheartedly agree with. If the penalty and the period ends during a power play, you're just peppering the goalie. And then period ends, you got to bring it all the way back. That kind of stinks. And it's not like a major advantage because obviously it's still a face-off. You still need to win that face-off in the offensive zone. So I think that's that second one's really good. What does she say? She says, um, oh, there was more, I guess. But number two and number, number one, number two, so simple that I almost forgot it wasn't a rule already. Yeah, so it seems like she agrees with that. Next up, delayed PP should not negate the PP. Again, I... If it's six on five, you score on a six on five. It's fair that the PP doesn't work. Um, if a team scores on delayed penalty, they should be awarded. The We're among the most popular rule change. Fair is fair, and the team in question shouldn't be penalized for scoring. But the players know the rules, and reflex happen in live action. When somebody commits a penalty, sees a penalty, or are penalized against, I'd be on more more on board if this change if it was more specific. Perhaps if the penalized person was not involved in the goal scoring play, but that would be way too complex. Yeah, I. I wouldn't change it personally. It's a little bit hard. If a losing team gets a power play at the end of the game, the game should be extended to give that team a full attempt on the power play. They admit a very flawed idea, but it would be kind of fun. Um, yeah, I, I see the logic in this. Sometimes at the end of the games, people would just like hack with like 30 seconds left. They'll, they'll get very physical, commit some penalties because they know, oh, it's just like, maybe the refs won't call this and even if they do we got to deal with the penalty for like 30 seconds so i'm against that because again it would be pretty madding maddening if a penalty is called with 10 seconds left a team's down by one and then we have to play another a minute 50 after that i think there are some flaws in that i wouldn't touch it i wouldn't touch it personally i think a team should oh maybe this could work uh, with a power play with like under two minutes if you can get a penalty shot because let's say again you get you get a penalty with 30 seconds left. You don't have enough time to really set it up. I, I think that can maybe work. I would love cry Ryan's creativity here, but I was a hard no until this other user stepped up. A full 60 needs to be a full 60 period. This is not soccer. Yep. So it seems like she's somewhat with it. I don't know. Let's move on. Shorthanded goal wipes the power play off the board. This one gets talked about a lot. I I'm personally not for it. If you score a goal, it kills the penalty. No, because you still did commit the penalty. You still need to serve the two minutes and you did score a goal. So I don't, I don't know why you should be benefited even more, even after you score a shorthand goal. Maybe I'm old fashioned like that. Let's see what she has to say. This is one side of a similar coin that keeps on popping up. Should a shorthanded goal wipe away a power play off the board? I kind of feel like we should just leave all of the alone. Yeah, I agree with that as well. But I bet I'd say the same if rule changes y'all proposed were the ones already in place. Yeah, it's just something where it's like, it's not, in, it's not broke. Maybe it is broke a little bit, but it's not, this, this would be a big rule change to the game. Penalty shots should not replace a power play, but be an addition to it. That's not good. I'm sorry. That's, they're saying that you get a penalty shot and a power play. I do penalty shots. You convert, I think slightly at like, if you have a, it is tough because if like your fourth line grinder gets a penalty shot, but he wouldn't be on a breakaway and get tripped up. But like decent penalty shot takers are what, like 
It's like more, it's better than a power play. So I, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah. This is overkill. Yeah. Extra hours. Ooh, OT. All right, let's dive into it. Remove the shootout three on three until they're done. I am all for extending three on three. I, I would go to 10 minutes personally. I think if you went to 10 minutes, you would see far less shootouts. I think at a, at a certain point you need to stop just because the players are playing so much. And I think a full 20 minute period, someone would eventually score on that three on three. You wouldn't have an OT playoff game going four or five periods, but I think 10 minutes and then a shootout would be would be my personal suggestion. I'm sure someone someone either let it be a tie or go full playoff three on th ties. I'm sure someone's going to ask about ties. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, 10 minute period. I think you still need to have the shootout. Rule preventing the OT slow pace. I'm sure they're going to propose something about that, but I think they should get rid of offsides in overtime. Too many times you see p teams bring it out, just stall with the puck. If you got rid of offsides, I think that would massively help in terms of actually having flow in overtime because teams just try to establish a zone, go around, go around, go around, oh, and then eventually like they're like, oh, let's get a change. Let's just bring it out. It's boring as hell. They definitely need to do something regarding that. As for ties, maybe it's like the American in me. I don't want ties. Like I, I, I don't want to be English Premier League. You, you go to a match and then you leave and it's 1-1. I think there needs to be some type of a winner. So I think shootout should stay, but it should be something ex extended on 10-minute power. Uh, three on three in overtime, if that makes sense. Oh, yes, let's go. This is, I, I've advocated for this. The 3-2-1 point system. Regulation win three points. OT win two points. If no one wins, an O. Oh, but this is also saying ties. I'm for... Regulation win, three points. OT shootout win with the 10-minute three-on-three. Uh, two points. OT shootout loss, one point, and then loss, zero. It's ridiculous that a regulation win... Regulation win should be worth more than an OT or shootout win because that's just not... It's not traditional hockey. It's not five-on-five -five hockey. It's not what we are used to. So the fact that you get the same amount of points is a little bit ridiculous. I think the loser point probably should exist to some extent. I know that might be a controversial take, but I'll stand by it. Can goalies get weirder? God, goalie rules. If you pull the goalie in OT, you should not get the loser point. I'd love to see someone try a 4v3 in OT, which Fedorov does in the KHL. Yeah, look, if loser points is going to consist, I am open. I am. I cannot read for shit. I am all for anything that makes the game more interesting. Um, yeah, I think they should get rid of the fact that if you pull the goalie, you don't you don't get the loser point. That's a little bit weird to me. I I, I would be for that. Goalies serve their own power penalties. Is this assuming that the backup can come in and play? Because if not, and you have to throw a skater in net or throw some pads on him, I'm not for that. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I, I understand the logic. If they're going to commit the penalty, they, they should serve. But that seems a little bit extra. Goalies are not allowed to play to to leave the crease to play the puck behind the goal line. I could be for that. I It's not that much of like a massive game changer. Like nowadays, like goalies... Yeah, most of the time when a goalie plays the puck, it's it's more so bad. There's more bad than, say, they just pass it off to a defenseman. So I, I wouldn't hate this. Yeah, I was surprised to see so many of these. Eight times out of ten, do I think it's smart when the goalie leaves the crease? No. Is it usually entertaining? Yes. Should it be up to the individual's goaltender's discretion? I wouldn't change it, but I can understand it still existing. Plus minus should not count in pulled goalie situations. Assists should be rewarded to players who have received them on a breakaway when a penalty shot is called. Keep your penalty if we already went over that. Lose your PPI. The other two we already went over. But the first one, I agree with that. That is weird because I'm that, that that's weird that it's already in place. You're already at such a disadvantage. If you're five if you're one of those defensemen forwards that were that are on five on four protecting the lead, that you're it's basically a power play. So I don't know why. Plus minus counts during that. That's stupid. And assist should be awarded to players who have received them. I, I think that's another great, great idea. If, if you make a sick breakout pass, then the guy gets absolutely taken down. He gets a penalty shot. He scores. He's the only one that gets a goal. You get absolutely nothing on the stat sheet for that. That's ridiculous. That 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 is a. I've never thought about that, but that is smart. That's like a just a neat little statistic. And I know shoot, uh, whatever penalty shots don't happen that much, but that'd be a good thing. Players can leave the box for early penalty minutes if they face them. <laughs> I'm for that. I'm for that. That's a meme one. Right. Everybody's favorite. Offsides. Knew we were going to get into this. 
Get rid of offsides review is the only answer. Worst rule in sports. My take on offsides, and I'm sure they're going to go more in depth on this in this, is it, it should be, if, if it's 30 seconds in the, off, in the offensive zone, but there was an offsides 30 seconds ago when they entered the offensive zone and then they score, it shouldn't count. There should be a certain amount of time after a goal, because I agree, there should be some type of offside review if it's right off the rush, they're entering the zone, someone slightly offsides, then back, forth, back, forth, goal. Yeah, you should call the offsides because that's a direct, it was directly impacted by that. But if some guy on the other side of the ice on the entry is offsides, then they establish a zone, they pass back and forth for 30 minutes, 30 seconds, whatever. But uh, then, then it shouldn't count because it's so far after it didn't, him being slightly offsides did not give them that much of an advantage. So I'm sure it's going to go more in depth on that, but... That's my thoughts. Puck shots from behind the blue line or a double. If a goalie lets in, yeah, that'd be funny. If a goalie fucking lets in up from the red line a goal, it should be worth double. Um, but actually, if a team enters the offset and scores, but the other team possessed it before the goal. Oh, so this is saying, all right, this is saying if you're offsides on the entry, then the defensive team gets it, but then they don't clear the zone. Then they get it back. I'm down for that. If a goal is scored 15 seconds after the puck is brought into the zone, offsides, it should still count. I agree wholeheartedly. I would even say like 10 seconds maybe. Um, I'm sure it has been said they're eliminating entirely. There should be a timer on it. Yep, goal happens after. Maybe like, I think 15 is actually more fair than 10. For the love of God, can we get rid of the offsides? It can't, yeah. Um... No more slow motion replay. I think there should be slow motion if it is, if it's scored right after the offside play, but I agree, like, on, again, the 15, 30 seconds later, you probably should get rid of that. If a person who is offside, yep, this is, again, this is just people saying the same stuff, which they're correct. No offsides once a team crosses the red line. The game is... I don't hate that. That's definitely an interesting one. I. Right. Miscellaneous gripes. If a player is down with an injury and can't get off the ice, stop the play immediately, not when an injured player's team touches the puck. Back to back. Okay, let's do the first one first. If a team is down with an injury and can't get off the ice, stop the play immediately. Um, I, I think this, this is like a smart idea, definitely, if a player is severely injured. My one fear would be, and I'm, I don't think, I'm not sure hockey players would be diving like this, but we've seen in football games, there's in college football, at least there's this thing where if a player goes down, they stop play. It's basically a timeout and some guys fake injuries, fake cramps. So the one thing I fear is hockey is such a bang, bang sport. But like if, if there's a turnover, someone might go down. Nah, actually, I don't, I don't think that'd be that bad of a problem. Problem. It definitely isn't wor worse in football just because there is more. All right, moving on. Okay, moving on. Miscellaneous gripes. If a player is down with an injury and can't get off the ice, they should stop play immediately, not when a player's, in, player's team touches the puck. I think that's fair. If a player is severely like, like in pain, yeah, the play should probably just stop, especially because it's basically a, basically a power play at that time. You have a five-on-four at that time. Back-to-back -back icings by the same team within 30 seconds is a delay of game penalty. That's interesting. That is unique. I could... If we made that a little... If we made it like 20 seconds, I could maybe be down for that. 30 seconds might... That might be a little bit too short, but I, I, I like the logic on that. Get rid of the instigator penalty. I don't like fighting as much as anyone, but the cheap shots. I, I, I could see that. Um, loser tournament during the Stanley Cup playoffs to decide the first overall pick. That would be... I, I, I think that'd be interesting in theory, but the logistics of that, getting guys after they clearly missed the playoffs, those guys don't want to battle... <laughs> They don't want to play any more games after the regular season. Like I, I hate to say it, play for the love of the game, but they're risking in, then they're risking injuries just for a goddamn eighteen-year-old. These old dudes, I, I don't think that's very practical. I'm going to be honest. And then or a GM's game night. That's funny. That's funny. But I, I would love to see the first overall pick, but that'd be a nightmare to bargain with the NHL PA. And I just feel like guys. If it's a Connor Bedard draft year, yeah, they'd go balls to the wall. But like, imagine 2022. Like, oh, you could take Slavkovsky, Wright, or Cooley, like, who are all not, like, generational prospects. The players aren't going to be a fuck. I once called Hurricane General Manager in Don Modell, and he texted me that he could talk because he was at the rodeo. 
Also, I'm also here for a losers tournament. Just what? What would happen? Sharks versus sharks. Or perhaps the first team that loses to the sharks. <laughs> That's funny. But I could see maybe a four man. Okay, a four man tournament of the four worst teams. That could be interesting. If we're doing a full sixteen, not as not down as much. Kicked in goals or goals. I agree. The intent, the blurry line. There should there should be something where you can't lift your skate so much off the ice, like a fat kick, but it just a push, it definitely should count. I've said that before. Change the playoffs to a double elimination bracket to decide that that's above my pay grade. What? Yeah, I think the playoff format's fine. Just 16 teams, not double elimination. Shooting the puck into the stand should be treated like, a, like an icing, not a two game. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a stupid rule. This penalty has always annoyed me. Amen, Sarah. Currently, if McAvoy passes to Marchand, who passes it to Pasta, who passes it back to Marchand, then it's scored as a Marchand goal with McAvoy and Pasta assist. I would change it so it's a Marchand goal, an assist, a Pasta, and Mar Wow. So you're saying that you could get two assists. You can get assist and goal on the same play. It makes sense, but I think for, for stat keeping and all that, just keep it the way it is. It, it does make sense. I, that would be very interesting. Just you have like a eight point night, but it's really like four goals that you scored and assisted on the same one. Make the language of all the rules not be open to more interpretation, complete transparency on decision making. I agree with that. Off the ice officials introduced this style. Officials are now trained one on ice official in total who has consistent communication with multiple. Yeah, I, th I think there definitely should be more off ice officials that have more of a press box view overall, like, like all 22 in NFL, like just a full view of everything going on. I think they should go to more of a off ice system. Penalty should be a design smoking area. I'd probably change the rule where you're required to disclose info that is publicly available. <laughs> if you don't lose the first, that's a, that's a joke about the senators, which yeah, it, everybody cat friendly had the Donovs shot. <laughs> no trade list, but yeah, those are the picks. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about these suggestions? Which ones would you agree with? Which ones would you disagree with? And drop some of your own in the comments down below. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.